Okay, welcome. We are going to talk about hosting and closing. So I did do an open business call for this topic, but I wanted to record it so that if you weren't able to come on the business call, you can access it. If you wanted to review it, here it is again for you. So I'm just going to jump right in, get to it. Um, I know time is precious, but thank you for being here with me and taking the time to listen. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or message me directly and we can talk about a strategy going forward. Um, or whatever. I just I love to have brainstorm sessions with with people. So if you want to talk after, just shoot me a message or drop it in the comments. So hosting and closing. Uh, here's what we're going to talk about first. We're going to talk about hosting. Um, probably not in the way that you think. I've adopted this kind of new mindset that has been super great in allowing me to think bigger picture and not get so caught up in a greedy or competitive state. So really putting my blinders on, not worrying about what other people are doing, um, what other people, um, successes that they're having, those sort of things. And it's been really really opening for me. So it came to light in the last few months of me moving more into the coaching side of this business, being more assertive with my Young Living business, and also sharing a lot of my personal life, which in the past has been challenging for me to do. So I focused on the highlight reel in the past, not wanting to really... Um, honor the the season of life that I'm in right now but always trying I was always trying to portray that I was like five steps ahead of where I actually was which in big picture it, it hurts you to not just be honest in where you are because you lose a lot of connections and I think it becomes really transparent for people when you're not being authentic in the in the place that you are in your life so for example because I was engaged before, I almost wanted to skip this very beautiful season that Jason and I are in right now, planning a wedding and, you know, being engaged and enjoying this time. And I just wanted to skip to already calling him my husband just because I thought, oh, you know, I was here before and, you know, obviously it didn't work out. And maybe that is a flaw for me when in reality, it couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, my life is more abundant and, and more happy than I ever could have wished it to be. So I've just learned to really sink into the now and embrace exactly where I am right right in this day, even if it's not where I, I want to be in the future. I've also been binging out on podcasts and uh, videos which have been super amazing. Um, so I've attempted to compile all of these thoughts into this podcast, and I hope you'll gain some insight, motivation, or tactical information. So hosting. There are three ways we can host as builders. One is in person. Two is online classes or info sessions. And the third, and I think the most used but mostly unvalued way we host is on our social media platforms. So number three is what I want to talk about because I feel like what is happening now is everyone has a page and is starting their own business and it is it's getting super confusing and overwhelming for people because here's the thing. Yes, we all have something unique that we bring to the table. We all have a voice and we will attract different types of people to this business that connects us. But the bottom line isn't about us. This is about hosting our current and potential members into the Young Living lifestyle. I think it's great that everyone is, um, you know, starting their own page and going out on their own and exercising that voice that we have. But I know that where a lot of us are failing and falling short right now is that we just seem one dimensional as in whoever we're getting to sign up with us thinks that they're getting, getting us and only us to connect with as an upline. Um, so that 
it can be great. It can be great if you are like-minded with that person, have things in common, and want to use oils for the same thing, but it can be a huge problem if none of those connections are hitting instantaneously. You're not going to have the same thing in common um, with somebody who's 20 years older than you or 10 years younger than you as you are with someone in the same stage of life. So if we can offer more to these people as in our our upline in an entirety, I think that we're going to see, see bigger benefits. Um, so a quote that really put things into perspective for me from the Strat 1000 group videos is we're farmers, not scavengers. Um, so that means that we plant seeds, we nurture them, we help them to grow. And by not offering our organization as a whole to people, we're stunting that potential growth for a relationship and our income. So here's an example. Uh, if you have a party at your house, it could be any kind of party, doesn't need to be a young living party, but you only served Cosmos because that's what you drink. That's your specialty. So if you had 20 people at your house and you had one drink option, how many people do you think are going to have that Cosmo and leave your party feeling like they were served? Um, my guess is probably max four people and they're going to be your girlfriends who come over every Wednesday night to drink Cosmos with you. So we know there's going to be someone who doesn't drink, um, wants a coffee, or somebody who's pregnant and wants a lemon water, or a fitness chick who wants a tea, or whatever. People want different things, but we can still host them in our house. We can host people of all different ages and lifestyles as long as you're willing to put your ego aside and offer them what's going to serve them best. So the solution is being willing to offer to your guest or clients in Young Living what will serve them best. So it doesn't mean that you have to give the sign up away or put that member in with somebody else. It just means that you have to be willing to say, hey, um, I think that there's somebody's page in our upline who you would really connect with. Once you sign up, let's get you plugged into there. So how many of you say this when you enroll someone? You'll be entered into our resource and upline groups. We have a huge community. But how many of us are actually utilizing that? So I have a friend who lives in Thunder Bay who I met in Ontario teaching dance a million years ago. She started asking me questions about oils about a month ago because she signed up with Young Living and she's been using them. I care 0% that she's not in my downline. She told me she's enrolled under her aunt, yada, yada. And then the other day we found out she's actually in this organization. And here the entire time, we actually have this huge connection through Young Living and we didn't know about it. So we need to really start utilizing our organization. If you're just starting out, get to know your uplines. You have to search around, go to their pages, see who you click with. If you don't click with someone who enrolled you, you're going to find someone who you gravitate towards in your organization. It's it's inevitable. These organizations are huge. And it it just it opens up this whole new level of connection into the community when we have more to offer our enrollments than just ourselves. So example, if I was talking to somebody about Young Loving who I learned in conversation or from their social media or whatever, that they like to do mission work, I would say, oh my God, we have this amazing girl in our organization named MJ. She's super involved with the Young Living Foundation. She's been to Uganda. She's actually heading her own trip there next year. Once you're enrolled, I could reach out to her with your info or add you to her page. I think you'd really enjoy that aspect of Young Living. And then bam, it's a personal connection and you are hosting them. So I really do think that we're stronger together. I know for me, I'm happy to have anyone ask me questions or be interactive on my pages, whether they are in my direct downline or not. And here's the best way to look at it. You have to share the lifestyle so big that everyone fits into it. So the other part of hosting that I want to talk about on personal pages is the approaches we take and the time we're putting in. 
So I don't know about you, but I have never once had a blind sign up. So I've never just posted my link on something and then bam, a complete stranger signed up on ER with a kit and became a loyal customer. I You can't expect to throw up a picture no matter how beautiful it is, no matter what the caption is, and grow a business. It's just not how it works. Um, and a side note to this is, I really think that we have to stop saying anyone can do this and offering everyone a seat at our table. Because for me, I know that there's a very specific type of person that I want to work with, that I want to become a builder in my downline. So I really think it's a disservice to the work that we as builders put in to our organizations and our businesses to keep saying that anyone can do it. Because I mean, anyone can go to med school and become a doctor too, right? It's just not everyone is going to do that. So I think it, not everyone deserves a seat at the table. And I really do think that we need to stop making it seem like anyone can, can pick up and become a diamond in a year because then people are getting the wrong idea when they sign up, they get their kit, and then they post pictures, and all of a sudden they're not having a thousand dollar income in a month. Um, so just just know that we have to keep the integrity of what we're doing at a high level to keep the reputation of Young Living and this this company at a high level. So we have to host our pages and social social media platforms. And why would someone sign up with you? Who are you? What do you stand for? Why would someone choose your inbox to slide a question into over anybody else? And what? And when that happens, how are you handling it? Are you showing a genuine interest in that person? Um, or are you just throwing a kit at everything that comes into your path? Because kits are great, but they're not always the answer. And I would say five out of 10 times people are looking for a specific product that might not come in the kit. So it's your job to engage, ask questions and have a conversation. It's not somebody asks you um, about lavender oil and all of a sudden you're throwing the business in their face, right? It's a conversation. They ask a question, you give an answer. They ask another question, you give an answer. You ask a question, they give an answer. It's a give and take. It's an equal exchange of energy. So I've broken it down into two categories that I believe to be true when it comes to signups. Rule and fluke. So fluke signups are blind signups with a link. Post a nice picture and get a sale. And here's the rule. You build a relationship with that person or you already had an existing relationship with that person. You have an exchange of give and take energy. This can last for days, weeks, or months. There's no time limit on closing a sale. Your investment of time equals their trust. Someone has to trust that they are in good hands and that you actually care about their well-being nine times out of ten to make a purchase. And here's my sub rule to the fluke rules to make it even more flukable. If you get a blind sign up or an enrollment from a photo, that person has already been shared with, but they connected with you on a deeper level, so you closed them. Okay? That person had been shared with already, but whoever shared with them either didn't connect with them or didn't didn't say, hey, I sell Young Living, let me help you. So you connected to them and you closed them. Which is also true for the opposite and brings me to my next point. Someone else will close the people that you share with. If you are not assertive in your business, feel one-dimensional, or have zero confidence in your approach to sales, someone else is going to get your clients. And here's the full circle moment. You don't have to click with everyone you come in contact with or be in the same situation as life as them, but having the ability to hook them up with someone who is 
after they enroll with you is going to grow your business. We don't have to lose sales because people don't fit into our personal style or brand. The main thing we need to really keep at the forefront of our minds is that we are introducing people to a new lifestyle. This is an entire movement. We are in the customer service business and we are here to serve people by speaking into their lives with positive reinforcements. The more you adopt the mindset of you are here to help people, the less fictional sales guilt or shame you are going to feel. Host with a purpose. If you host a party and you're calculating the commission money based on how many people are there if everyone bought a kit right off the bat, you're not in the right mindset and you probably won't make any sales. Closing is about confidence, and it's about knowing that you are getting these products into people's hands to help them. Closing a person can take a day or it can take longer. Whatever it is, it's worth your investment. Plant seeds. Keep conversations rolling. Check in. Build a relationship. Be honest with yourself about past customers and how you as their upline assisted them in their journey and learn to improve your services in the future. Don't let your ego get in your way. If you sign someone up and you never checked in with them again and they never ordered, that's on you. You need to go back and apologize to that person and ask if moving forward there was any way that you could build a relationship or help them now. Don't let your ego hinder your business. If you are new to the business or you've been on a bit of a break, you can expect immediate traction. You can't get excited for one day, not get 10 signups and quit. The 90 day business rule applies to our business just like or more than any other. Stick to something for 90 days. Work for 90 days and you'll start to see momentum and results. you got to put your blinders on when it comes to other people because you have no idea how long they've been working behind the scenes to get those sales or hit that rank. It doesn't matter. What matters is the work that you are going to put in today, tomorrow, and the next 88 days after that. So here are some tools we can implement to make sure we host and close with confidence. Paint a clear picture of who you are and your journey with Young Living. What does it look like? What was your life like before Young Living? What were your initial objections or hesitations to oils? Why did you join? What was your moment of sign up? And how is your life different now? Don't reinvent the wheel. It's not about saying new things to the to new people all the time. It's about saying the same things to new people every single day. So embrace your community. Know people's strengths in your organization and put members in contact with those people you think will serve them best through their journey. Take your seat at the table because we all have one and embrace the idea of belonging to this organization and this company over fitting in. Don't duplicate what you see is working for somebody else because they're doing it and if they're being authentic in their own power, they're going to do it better than you every single day. The idea of fitting in is morphing our true self to be like somebody else that we think is has a has a a spot at the table already. But knowing that we belong at that table is bringing your authentic truth and being yourself to build a business. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found some value in the content today. Um, As always, drop me a comment or question. I'd be so happy to talk to you about the information in here today. And thank you so much for listening.